وإني على ثقة من طريق إلى الله رب السنا والشروق فإن عافني السوق أو عاقني فإني أمين لعهد الوثيق فإني أمين لعهد الوثيق The eighth chapter of the Shuruh explains the understanding of culture and its relationship with faith in great detail. It begins by identifying the concept of culture, that is, all collected knowledge and understanding available to people. It is this culture that creates a necessary standard for people by supplying a balance with which to approach human concepts and perceptions. Through cultural concepts, people gauge and identify their standpoint with respect to matters around them. Furthermore, cultural concepts greatly affect one's comprehension of their own nature, their mission in life, and their ultimate destiny. On the other hand, these cultural concepts and standards of measurement are affected by one's perception of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as well as the life and reality around them. Therefore, culture is the fundamental bond between people's ideology, or their set of core beliefs, and perception. In this chapter, there is a pressing question that imposes itself strongly, and the author of the Shuruh answers it accordingly. The question is, what is the sole legitimate source that is available to mankind that they can depend on with full certainty? What is the source from which mankind obtain answers to its questions as well as the methodology of life that is compatible with its nature? The Shuruh clarifies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His mercy and virtue did not leave room for disagreement and conflict between those who sincerely want to seek the truth. Indeed, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created men and tasked them with dedicating their worship to Him alone, He sent down prophets and messengers to provide guidance. As such, mankind can have no argument against Allah for he revealed to them all that they need on their short journey on earth. Allah taught them about himself and he clarified the values, principles, morals, rituals, and permissible and prohibited matters that he decreed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then ordered mankind to dedicate themselves to him alone, without a partner in all their actions. These matters can only be received from the honor of absolute knowledge and absolute truth. That is Allah, the only, the all-knowing, and the all-acquainted. The Shuruh also makes it clear that empirical science is the only area in which a Muslim is allowed to receive from other sources. These are fields such as engineering, medicine, agriculture, and so on and so forth. In the topic of governance and laws, the Shuruh makes a noteworthy point. Islamic Sharia is often confined to the laws that govern the society, yet this is quite different from what was originally defined by Islam and clarified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book. Sharia in Arabic language as well as in the Islamic lexicon has meanings and concepts far beyond this narrow sense. It spreads beyond the systems that govern individuals and communities to include the values, standards, principles, concepts, and perceptions. Sharia also defines the ethics, behaviors, morals, as well as the rites and rituals of Islam. Indeed, the meaning of Sharia encompasses all aspects of human life.
The Shuruh shows that the concept of Sharia in Islam contains all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enacted to regulate the life of man on this earth. This includes values and perceptions, ethics and behavior, rites and rituals, and laws and regulations. This is the complete understanding of Sharia in Islam. And it is this wide, all-encompassing understanding of Sharia that truly corresponds with the divine stature of Allah Almighty, the Lord of the worlds. It is Allah alone who is aware of everything in this existence. Thus, undoubtedly, the ultimate source from which we receive everything should be Allah's commandments and none other. Based on what was said previously, the Shuru' clarifies that apart from empirical sciences, there are two types of culture from an Islamic perspective. The first type is the Islamic culture. It's the culture that is established on the basis of receiving from Allah alone, as was exhibited by the prophets and messengers of Allah, peace be upon them all. The other type is the Jahili culture, which is any culture not based on the basis of receiving from Allah alone, but rather on man-made ideas and methodologies conceived by mere people. The Shuruh has clarified in this chapter the comprehension of culture in Islam and how it relates to the Islamic ideology. With this proper understanding, Muslims can find the true path with clarity and certainty in a day and age where Islam has truly become strange. Yet there may be further lingering questions after this presentation, such as, do intellectual and artistic activities relate to governance? If so, how? Is the Western idea of dissociating art from knowledge, empirical or religious, a correct and proper idea? Is it true that Westerners, if they attain advanced scientific knowledge, tend to leave their religions, whereas a Muslim does not leave their religion due to their lingering ignorance? Is the saying, separate knowledge from the holders of knowledge, a correct saying? And finally, is it true that enmity towards religion is fundamental to Western thinking? How so? To answer these and other questions that may occur to many people, we urge you to follow the shuruh. Inshallah, the Shuruh chapters will be published sequentially on the official website of the group, The Proclaimers of the Truth. And all praise is due to Allah, and may His peace and blessings be upon His Messenger. فإني أمين لعهد الوثيق فإني أمين لعهد الوثيق